so wonderful again for this wonderful Sunday that uh, um, the Lord has given us so that we can be able to dive into God's word and receive instructions as always and so that we can be able to uh, not only encourage ourselves but be edified and become strong and become clearer, clearer with the purpose of life. And so this is why we are here. So uh, greetings to every single one of you this, this morning, uh, wherever you are, you are and wherever you are listening uh, are from. Uh, but uh, as we um, get ready to dive into the Word of God, uh, let's pray first. Father, thank you for your good and great God. I bless you, my God, because of who you are. I thank you for your love that is unconditional. And so today, Lord, as we get into your word, we thank you for the Holy Spirit who is going to instruct us, and give us instructions that is going to be beneficial for every single one of us. And so, Father, take control this hour as I speak to your people. Lord, give me utterance that is going not only to inspire them, but that is going to instruct them, Lord, to have their ignorance permanently demolished. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Um, good. Um, this this Sunday, this day, uh, we have um, uh, kind of a two part series that I wanna I wanna I wanna kickstart today. We're going to talk about something that I have termed recovering from shattered dreams. Every single one of us has got dreams. Dreams are nothing but longings that actually are embedded within our heart, within our mind, that we desire to see them manifest or come to pass. Every human being, every human being on planet Earth has such longings. It's good to have dreams. We all have dreams. We all have desires. We all have expectations. But today, I'm going to speak um, on this subject uh, from the aspect where the dreams, the dream that you have is the one that is aligned or in alignment with God's plan and purpose. And then next week, we shall handle the dreams that you would have, but that are not in alignment with God's plan and purpose for your life. Both are dreams, but they are from different places. One comes from the place where God has ordained for the dream for your life. And the other is from that place which is just from your own longing and desires, but that may have nothing like the backing of God's plan and purpose for your life. Uh, let me begin by reading from the Bible, the scripture from Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 21. This arguably for me, it is an incredible scripture, an amazing scripture, a powerful scripture that actually defines your destiny, defines your purpose on planet Earth and how you're going to um, work out your journey, your destiny on planet Earth. The Bible says in the NIV translation of the Bible that many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Many are the plans in our hearts. But not all those plans are necessarily the ones that are in alignment with God's plan and purpose for your life. Now remember, we, we didn't just show up on planet Earth. God created us. And because we are created by God, God had a purpose. Why? He put us on planet Earth. Because for everything that God created, there must be, there was a reason. Everything, arguably, even for us humans, 
every time we create something, there is a reason behind the creation of that something. Amen. And so the, the, the purpose of the creator actually supersedes the plans of the creation. Amen. You know, and so, and so let's get this out of the way. It doesn't matter what we think. It doesn't matter what we plan. It doesn't matter what kind of dreams that we have. It doesn't matter what kind of longing that we have. And sometimes we have advanced our own longings and desires and plans that are not necessarily in alignment with God. And that's why God remains to be God, because even when we stray and get into things that actually are not in alignment with his plan and purpose for our lives, God will always pick us up and bring us back in line. If we obey, of course, if we listen to him and obey him. Amen. So this is the journey of life, my dear friends. And so th this is imperative to understand that actually it is the plan and the purpose of God that prevails, that supersedes your plans, your desires, your longings that you would be hovering in your heart. Now, I know everyone has faced the, the reality of having our longings, our, sh our dreams shattered. And if you haven't, well, welcome to the club. It's, it's, it's coming. It's a matter of when, not if. Because, you know, dreams come and we try to kind of nourish the dreams and cultivate the dreams and make them to come to fruition. And there has been more times that the dreams never materialized. Now today, like I said, we are going to look at the place or the situation where your dreams are shattered, but actually not because they were not in alignment with God's purpose. Your dreams get shattered even though they were in alignment with God's plan and purpose for your life. Now, this is just going to be very interesting, but I will draw it from the Bible so that we, we can get these incredible instructions, which, of course, it defies our, our common sense, but it is absolutely quite in tune with God's sense. Amen. Now, the question is going to be, how does God want us to respond when our hopes are dashed, our plans knocked out, and our schemes are sidelined, when those kind of things happen to us, how does God expect us to respond to such occurrences or to such situations that actually... Um, leave us not only dented, battered, but most of the time crushed. But thanks be to God because He is God. Even when we are knocked down, we still get the strength to kind of rise up back again. We are never knocked out. If we always learn to re uh, uh, oscillate and, and resonate back to him, he always will be there. Remember, just like the prodigal son who had left his home and haven't taken uh, all that belonged to him of his father's inheritance, and he squandered everything that he had taken, the wealth that he had taken, uh, from his father and went and messed up not only his uh, his wealth but messed up his life but watch this the bible says when he came back to his senses and considered going back to his father the father was always there 
to welcome him back. This is very important. And this is how we live our lives. Listen, I want to say this up front. Our lives are absolutely never perfect. And God knows. But God looks at our hearts and is watching to see that our hearts are in tune with him. Desiring to love him and be with him. So much so that whatever happens to us, wherever we go, even when we digress, he always expects that because our hearts are tuned up to him, we'll always get back to him. And he will always be there for us. Amen. Now, the story that um, we, 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 we want to pick here to exemplify a situation when our dreams are shattered, even though our dreams are in alignment with God's plan and purpose. We pick this dream, I mean, this example uh, from the book of Genesis. This is the story of Joseph. Now, I know this is a very popular story, so I will pick some segments. We know Joseph was a beloved son of Jacob. And um, the father loved him so much, and then he had a dream. So we pick it from Genesis chapter uh, 37. Uh, Genesis chapter 37. Amen. Um, let's get here. Genesis chapter 37. And let us see um, uh, w w what is happening here. So in... in, in, in um, in verse 5, the Bible says, Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. He said to them, listen to this dream I had. We were abiding she uh, sheaves of grain out in the field, when suddenly my sheaf rose and stood up, upright, with your sheaves gathered around mine, and bowed down to it. Verse 8 says, His brother said to him, Do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of the dream and what he had said. Verse 9, Then he had another dream, and he told it to the brothers. Listen, he said, I had another dream, and this time the sun and moon and eleven stars were bowing down to me. When he told his father as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, What is this dream you had? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you? His brothers were jealous of him, but his father, watch this, kept the matter in mind. Now, fast forward to chapter uh, 40 and verse 14, um, no, verse 5. Let's start with verse 5. Verse 4. So here, this is the story of the cupbearer and the baker um, who were sent to prison by uh, Herod. And verse 4 says, The captain of the guard assigned them to Joseph, and he attended them. After they had been in custody for some time, each of the two men, the cupbearer and the baker of the king of Egypt, who were being held in prison, had a dream the same night, and each dream had a meaning of its own. Now remember the story. Um... Joseph gave the interpretation for the dream that they had. But watch verse 14. After he finished giving the dream to them and showing that actually one of them was going to be released and was going to be rehired by the king, verse 14 says, But when all goes well with you, <clears throat> but when all goes well with you, remember me and show me kindness. Mention me to Pharaoh and get me out of this prison. 
I was forcibly carried off from the land of the Hebrews. And even here, I have done nothing to deserve being put in a dungeon. Amen. Now let me, let me just explain this and then hopefully we get the, the gist of the message that I intended to share with you this morning. How do you recover from your shattered dreams? When the dream that you have is of God. Does a dream that God gives you ever get challenged, tested, and shattered? Can you ever be shattered with a dream that has been handed to you by God? Because we have that there are so many plans in the hearts of men, but it is the purpose of God that prevails. Joseph receives the dream, and the dream actually makes no sense to his brothers and his parents. They made him like uh, an outlier. I mean, the parents loved him, but as for the dreams, they said, this is stupid. You hopeless. You cannot get a dream that insinuates the fact that we would be, you know, bowing before you. And neither Joseph nor the parents of the brothers understood the meaning of the dream entirely. But something was about to happen that was going to challenge the youthful understanding of Joseph and shatter his expectations as he anticipated the, them are from the dream that he had received. Surely, he never expected that he was going to um, uh, to go through the, the 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 valley of the shadow of death. He never expected that he was going to be uh, attempted to be killed. He never expected that he was not he was going to be sold from the land of the Hebrews into slavery, into Egypt. People who never shared the belief of the God of the Hebrews. He never expected that when sold, that actually he, he would uh, uh, be lied at by a woman, Potiphar's wife, who forced herself on him, and when he didn't want to commit sin against the God of his father, and his fathers, he was then lied against, and that le that landed him in jail as a pedophile. Maybe never to be released. He never thought that he would now go through this cascade of series of negative events or happenings, being pitted to be left for dead, then rescued from the pit and sold into slavery, then kept as a slave in Potiphar's home, and then from Potiphar's house, end up in the dungeon. Where is the prospects of his dream? Surely nothing looks like the dream he had in what is happening. This took about 13 years. It wasn't something that took 13 months or 13 weeks or 13 days. About 13 years from the time he had a dream to the time he eventually leaves jail. And the manifestation of his dream eventually came to the fore. How do you respond? Now, sometimes we can um, say, oh, he was incredibly quite in tune with God. Oh, yes, surely. He always pivoted back to the voice of God. 
He could get frustrated. He could get depressed. He was disappointed. And in Genesis chapter 40, what we just read in verse 14, we really see that he was a depressed man. He tells this folks, she says, when all goes well with you and you are released from jail and you go back to the king, he said, remember me. Let me read it again. He says, remember me. Hmm. He says, but when all goes well with you, remember me and show me kindness. Mention me to Pharaoh. And the Bible says, but when the chief baker got back, he forgot Joseph. He forgot Joseph and God had a plan. You see, he says, you see, you see, you can have so many plans, but it is God's purpose. But because God's purpose will always prevail, God had to activate and jog the memory of the chief baker. How did he do it? He did it spectacularly because he had a plan. He had a plan. And the plan was bigger than Joseph. He has a plan. He had a plan for the entire Jewish people, the Hebrews. For what was to come. Decades and, and decades of years, even after Joseph had gone and passed on to join his forefathers. He says here, God now activates this by sending a dream, giving a dream to Pharaoh. The dream that troubled him, the dream that he could not remember, and the dream that his astrologers and, and his, his sorcerers and, and all other mediums couldn't give interpretation. And at that moment, God jogged the memory of the chief baker that, hey, okay, there is one, and he's in prison, and he's Joseph. And then the manifestation of the dream, the dream that was shattered, the dream, the dream that was killed. At that time, at that time, listen, this is very important. At that time, Joseph had nothing of himself left in him. There was no pride. There was no coat of many colors. There was no being the beloved son of his father. No, nothing. It was now himself stripped of every ego, every self-centeredness, and looking up to God. Amen. You see, God has a plan. But the plan of God will be tested in you so that only God will remain to be the center of the plan, the dream that he has for you. And surely, when all has been said and done, the, the dream that Joseph had was the plan of God, not only for Joseph, but for the Israelites. Amen. And so, how does God want you to respond when your dream is shattered? Look up to him. It becomes easy. See, Joseph, time and time again, when he was pitted, when he was sold into slavery, even when he was in, in Potiphar's, Potiphar's house, when he was led against, you see, when he was in Potiphar's house, the Potiphar's house flourished because of the favor of God upon, upon Joseph. And then he's thrown in, 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 in dungeon, and then he's made to look after some other prisoners. All the time, he remembered the dream. But he kept himself right. That's key. And God was all the time looking and monitoring him. And helping him and pivoting him back. You see, when the chief baker is released, after Joseph interprets his dream, when the, ch the chief baker forgets him. But Joseph has told him, when all goes well with you, Remember me. Mention my name to the king. His salvation 
did not come from the baker, out of the baker's own, own volition. God will always orchestrate circumstances and situation, will, 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 will move pieces and, and loose ends and connect the dots, the dots and the loose ends to bring his purpose and his plan for your life to come to manifestation. Listen, you want to know how God expects you to respond when your dream is shattered? God wants you to establish in your heart that you're right with him. You're right, your heart is right with him. And even though you may go through the valley of the shadow of death, in as much as your dream is in alignment with his plan and purpose, his purpose shall prevail. And so sometimes dreams from God, more often than more often, dreams from God will be tested and they will come to a place where they are shattered like they are dead. And then they will be brought back to life. At that time, listen to me, what was shattered wasn't the dream, but what was shattered was every element of self, every ego, and every Mimi is stripped of you so that God would then play it out so that his purpose on planet Earth to the people that he created may be fulfilled. I pray this helps you understand that not every time when things go wrong with you, as you pursue the dream that God has put on your heart, that actually you are in the wrong. In as much as God witnesses in your heart that you are in the right, that you are in alignment with his plan and purpose, God get to know this. It may not be now, but the moment is coming when you will get into the full-blown manifestation of the very longing that you have heard, the very dream that God has put in your heart, that will bring forth the full manifestation of God's plan and purpose for your life on planet Earth. It is not going to be about you, but it is going to be about God and God's people that He created. That's very important. We came into this world for a reason, and that reason rests with God. And it is God who absolutely desires to see that the reason for which he brought you and I into the universe, it is, it is brought into manifestation. That's very important. And I want you take you to take this with you, even as I uh, finish with you to today, by saying, dreams come and dreams manifest. But when dreams are in alignment with God's plan and purpose, they will very often, and almost all the time, be tested and purified because they are not about you. They're about God and God's purpose with his people. Next week, we will handle the second aspect, and that is the dreams that we got, but they are not in alignment with God's plan and purpose. These are our longings, our desires, and how does God want us to respond when they get shattered? Until next week, God bless you. Shalom.